Hi, I'm Carl from Apt, and in this video we're going to talk about the similarities and differences between the TU-7000 and TU-8000, Samsung's newest UHD series TVs available right here at Apt. Make sure to check out our current pricing at the link in the description after the video. First off, we'll touch on the stuff they have in common. They're both native 60Hz panels with enhanced motion rates of 120. Both use the new Crystal Processor 4K for their picture engines, and both support HDR, HDR10+, and HLG. Both have the same sound system, comprised of two speakers with 20 total watts of power, and both run the Tizen operating system. So they do have several things in common, but there's also a fair amount of differences, the most minor probably being the outside colors. The 7000 has a Titan gray finish, and the 8000 has a black finish. More importantly, the TU8000 has two USB ports to the 7000's one, plus it has three HDMI inputs where the 7000 only has two. This is obviously a very important detail as it allows you to hook up an additional HD component. The 8000 also has a composite input that can come in handy if you have an older gaming system or VCR that you want to hook up, while the 7000 does not. The remotes are another spot where you'll notice a difference right away. The 8000 comes with the updated one remote, and the 7000 has the standard Samsung remote. The standard remote actually makes navigating the TV without voice commands a little easier in my opinion, but the one remote looks and feels a whole lot better. Then there's ambient mode. This was a feature you could only find on the QLEDs last year, but this year you get it on the TU8000. It's a scaled down version, but it still offers you the ability to use the TV as kind of like a picture frame or to display other relevant information for your day. I wouldn't say it's a make or break feature, but it is a difference as the 7000 doesn't have it. As you get into the menus, you'll see some other small changes. The 8000, for example, has a few additional options like grayscale to change your picture to gray tones, color inversion, and it has some sign language settings built in. These obviously won't benefit everyone, but for those who need them, it's a big deal. Another kind of uh, related menu item is the ability to recognize voice commands. The 8000 can, and you can uh, choose from Bixby or Alexa right out of the box. It'll work with Google too, but you'd have to add an external Google device. The 7000 works with all three as well, but you'd need an external device for any of the smart assistants. There's no voice recognition built directly into the TV or remote. Moving on to the picture, you'll see another upgrade on the 8000, UHD dimming. And while it's not the traditional full array style of dimming, it still helps with contrast and colors. It might be hard to see through a video on YouTube, but in person you can see more detail in the 8000. It'll be more noticeable in HDR content, but it is another benefit over the 7000. Gaming's another area where the 8000 will have some notable advantages. While both have a game mode that can be turned on to decrease input lag times, the 8000 also gives you the ability to use a feature called Game Motion Plus. This helps with screen sharpness. It's a feature that's gonna work best with the movements that you'd typically find in RPG and adventure type games. You can also tweak the judder settings and turn on LED clear motion to help sharpen fast moving images. So these aren't necessarily gonna help every gamer out there, but at least they're there on the 8000 if you wanna use them. The 7000's a nice TV for the price and it's got great input lag times with game mode turned on, but it's lacking some additional gaming features and features that might come in handy for someone with a visual impairment when you compare it to the 8000. What do you think? Is the 8000 worth the extra investment? Make sure you let us know in the comments. As always, we appreciate you watching, and we'll see you in the next one.